boys and girls welcome back to another episode of crazy dad's garage we're going to be working on the next step of the crazy dad rat rod number two today and uh what we're going to do is uh start in on the process of getting the floor into the 54. you got to get the old floor out the new floor in so I'll flip the camera around here and we'll show you what we're going to be doing so this is our starting point. Um, got the old floor out of the parts truck. And uh, before I do much of anything else, I'm going to cut this uh, rest of the cab up. I'm going to cut it across here and probably across here so that I can actually carry it around one piece at a time and store it in my backyard. I'm going to get that out of the way and then I'm going to get that floor up on saw horses and we are going to start cutting. Uh, finish cleaning it up we're going to do some straightening on it uh, do a little bit of rust repair so where this floor was fastened to the cab corner back here and also at the front and this is reversed from the way it came out of the truck but uh, rather than having tack welds down here um, they actually had a solid weld bead all the way down there um, Actually, what was really interesting on this truck, this rocker panel right here and the door jam piece going up here as well as on the A-pillar are all a heavier gauge steel than the floor pan and most of the rest of the steel in here. And so they actually had them welded together rather than just spot welded. So we're going to clean up those welds. Um, we got a bunch of screws that I cut off here. We got to get them out and cleaned up. Uh, here's a place where there was a big uh, weld welding the thing to the cab corner. Got to grind those off. Um, got to do a little bit of looking at the floor right over there and maybe on the other side to see if there's rust that I need to worry about and do a little bit of straightening on those. But I'm going to just get in here and start repairing this one so that when it goes in to the 54 over there that I've got myself a nice solid cab or nice solid floor um, there's a I'm pretty sure this is a bullet hole right here so I want to go in there and flatten that out a little bit so that it looks better uh, this back edge piece here that's the lower back of the cab I want to get this as straight as I can so that when I go to weld the new panel to it, that uh, that all works out well. So those are kind of some of the things that I'm going to do. Um, I'm going to come here and, uh, like I said, I'm going to get this cab cut up and get it moved out. And then I'm going to get that floor up on some sawhorses. And then we will come back and start showing you the process as we're going to move through it. So I'll be back in a minute with that much progress, I hope. That's all done kind of a big mess probably shouldn't try cutting a cab apart by yourself it uh, ended up falling on me on the last cut probably could have hurt myself but uh, I managed to escape anyway so what's next so I'm gonna first thing I'm going to do is clean up these welds and uh, the rocker panels I think so got a big booger weld here that I'm gonna grind off I'm going to clean up this uh, weld right there. I've got these screws. I'm going to go ahead and cut them off a little better. I think I can get a hold of them from the back and unscrew them out the back. I'll do that. Um, get this weld cleaned up right down here. Um, might do something with this right now. I'm not totally sure, but my real goal right now is to start cleaning up the welding stuff. So I'll do that. I'll come around here, same situation. Uh, get that weld cleaned off of there, cut the screws off, get this weld, and I've got that one and that one on this side that need to be cleaned up. And there's a little bit there. Got an extra piece of the old flange left on here, so I'll get that off. There is a weld right there, I'll get rid of that. And that's probably where I'll get to next. <laughs> I just discovered two uh, bullet dents right there. Looks like they didn't come all the way through, but uh, they were shot from the backside over here. Yeah, anyway, just 
part of the patina of the truck, I guess. So that's where I'm going to start. Oh, I'll probably unbolt this seat track and get it out of there since I've only got one. I don't have the one for the other side. And I don't even know what my seat situation is going to look like yet. I'll start there. Um, kind of just depend on what I feel like tonight. That smashing that whole back flat is going to be one of the next things. And then probably working on this back panel, I'm guessing. I've got a rip in it right here that I've got to fix. Although the actuality is it's probably only going to get cut back to here. So I may not have to worry about that. That may get cut off. So that's where I'm going to start. And some of the bigger things, I've got a rust hole right here. We will get a chunk of something and patch that with. Got a crack right there. So I'll grind that out a little bit and weld that up. Got a bend here, it comes over here flat and then dives off, so that needs to be lifted back up. And that leaves us with another crack there that we'll fix. I want to get those kind of things fixed up so that we get back to the sturdiness that we're looking for. But those will be kind of the major things, really, on what I got to do here. And then I'm going to flip it over. Um, got a dent right here that I want to try to pound that out to some degree or another. Um, not quite sure how that'll all look in the end, but yeah. And then I just need to grind these flanges off here where I've got spot welds going to go in there. Anything that's going to mate up to the other one, I have want to have it nice and clean. I may even get some primer and spray in those areas. I'm not sure. So yeah, that's do some hammer dolly work here. Grind these spot welds off to where they're, uh, down to one layer of metal instead of two. So that'll give you an idea where I'm going to go from here, and I'll be working on it. There's not a lot to show you on the video as far as the doing of it goes. It's a lot of grinder work for the most part, a little hammer and dolly work. So I'm going to do those things before we come back to the next uh, segment of the video. So I will be back in a little bit. Have fun waiting for me for the next 20 seconds. Well, there we go. I don't think you can see the haze from out here, but uh, <laughs> grinding that rust, I had a pretty good cloud going on inside the shop there. So anyway, kind of did a lot of the things we talked about doing. I uh, can't see so well here, but uh, we've ground all those edges smooth where we're going to have welds to go. Same thing down in this area. Got that. Got our screws all cut off that go along here. Clean that up down here to this weld so that we got that all corner and we got all around our edges here all cleaned up. So that's kind of what I accomplished there with the grinder for a while. Similar thing here as I did over on the other side. Yeah, so there we go. Getting over here in the dark. I don't know if you see that on camera or not. But anyway, doesn't matter. That's the step that we've taken now. So my next thing is going to be to get in here and do some of the straightening that needed to be done there. Um, I'll straighten all of these flanges along here so that they're nice and flat. Get that done. And yeah, I'm not sure exactly what after that, but that's probably going to be where I start next. <laughs> Since I'm dragging out the hammer and dolly and stuff, we're working on those. I'll probably get back here and work on straightening up this back panel at the same time. And maybe even do that hole right there in the rear support. So that's kind of my game plan. Oh yeah, I never did take that uh, seat track out. So I'll probably do that. But there you go. So that's where I'm at now. I'll be back here uh, in just a couple minutes for you guys. It'll be at least tomorrow night before I get to it for myself. So... Anyway, we'll be back when we show you some of those progresses, pieces of progress that we're making. Okay, there we go. That was a quick five seconds, right? Got all of this work done in that period of time. Isn't that amazing? So I've done a bunch of hammer and dolly work here for the most part. So I've got that edge straightened out along there the way it needs to be. Got this corner lifted up. Let's get over here. 
we can see now we're straight across and instead of before it was diving off down at that end this one here was a little bit that way so we brought it up and then we got this edge straightened out along here too so got that done the bulk of my work's been back here we uh, got the hole pounded flat there for the most part and what I'll do is come in here after I get my welder out, we'll weld that over and probably plug up that hole too and then grind it off smooth. But uh, got it where it's pretty flat. And the bulk of my work's been back here, trying to get myself a good edge along this back piece of sheet metal here. And uh, this side wasn't too bad. Most of it was over here. And uh, it's not perfect right now. You can see a bow right back over there, just past the center support. But what I'm finding is this has, uh, the skin has separated from the floor itself here. And when I pull that together, uh, that's getting most of this back in to where we've got a pretty good line along there. And uh, what I'm going to do, get down here. I've got some of these spot welds here, here, and there's another one out here that have all broken loose. And it's allowing that thing, this, this piece of metal actually got quite bent, although it didn't look like it. And uh, I had a good crease along here where that rusty line is. So we've got that uh, flattened out. There was a lot of waving up in here and it's not perfect yet, but it's way better than it was. And uh, then what was happening was this body line here was getting, or had been smashed flat, particularly over here. And even over here, it had been pulled in some. So I've gotten back there with this chisel that I've got and put it on that body line. And actually just above that body line and smacking that out when I had my vice grips holding the pinch weld here in place. And so that's what brought that out and actually you had a big wave right in here and by by moving that line back into alignment here it it actually pulled most of that wave out of there so that's kind of where i'm going to be at on this top side i think now it's time to flip it over and uh i'm going to take a look at the bottom from the bottom i'll be able to fix this dent um Actually, this is another thing that had happened here. So along this edge right here, let's see, you can look there and we're we're fairly straight up and down. Now this was actually bent out quite a bit here. Not sure how that would have happened um, or even if it mattered a whole lot structurally. But I've got it straightened back out now so that it matches my far side over there. Um, so those are kind of things I've done this evening on it. Like I said, I think now it's time to flip it over. Oh, I did pull my seat track off of there. So now I'm going to flip it over and uh, I'll work on some of those things that need to be worked on from the bottom. Then I'll drag my welder out. And I think one of the things I'm going to do, so we had spot welds here, 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 here. And I think one of the things I'm going to do, I'm going to drill another hole so I can plug weld between each one of those and that will allow me to pinch that seam tighter in together and get ourselves a better bond along here and uh, I think when I do that it will greatly improve the not just the strength back here but it'll pull things back more into the right uh, relationship to each other and I may get down under here in fact I'm sure I can see it right in here that uh, this lip on the floor right here is bent. So when I get underneath and flip it over, I can get that straightened out where I want it. So those are some of the things I'm going to be working on next when uh, I get back here after the next five second break. I'll have it upside down and a bunch of that stuff done. So I'll show you that. All right, we will be back then. All right, I've uh, been cleaning this up a little bit. Uh, scraping, uh, there's been some impacted grease and stuff on things and uh, got this old uh, undercoating here that I'm kind of trying to get off. I'm not sure how serious I'm going to get about it, but uh, I ran into something on these uh, 
there is a door seal seal right here that's held in place by a bracket underneath here fastened down by these screws but i've managed to get this one off of the other side got it laying in here here's a rubber piece that's come out of it now that's something that ultimately i'm going to want to get the door seals all replaced on this truck so i want to get those uh, ready to go and these things have come with let's see if we can see this here let me get over here these factory screws they've done us the favor of putting a really weird head on them to take to get that to focus anyway it's uh, an oblong head i mean the uh, the notch and it's an oblong shape not a shape like a regular screwdriver so it took a special tool to put it in there what i'm finding is that i can get a hold of those with the vice grips like that if i'm really careful and it doesn't take anything to break these loose because they're just uh screws not uh bolts and so if i'm if i do that with i don't want so i was using these other vice grips and i was getting it too tight and I actually uh, was wearing the edge of the jaws off and it wouldn't grip it anymore. But this is a fresh pair of vice grips with a sharp uh, edge on it. And I've got it to where it's just snug on it and it's actually holding. And then I can take that. Oh, it fell off. But anyway, you get the idea. I can get them loosened up and then I can grab them from the top and untwist them and they come right out. So I guess the first thing that I did was actually took a utility knife and cut this rubber off to get it out of the way. But that's a step that I ran into here that I thought would be important um, if you're going to be doing this. The other piece that we're going to end up working on here is this. So remember I had to straighten this line up uh, when I had the thing flipped over the other way. And then when I got it upside down, I'm looking at it and I realized there's actually still a bend in it right here. And so I'm going to be pulling this back over. And then I'll have to get around to... Uh, cutting this out, finding me some metal to replace that with. I don't know if you can see it or not on here. This is actually heavier than normal sheet metal. So I want to get something in there that's a similar weight. So anyway, that's uh, where I've gotten to at this point. Um, I'll show you over here. So I talked about this line being out of alignment here. And you probably can barely see it in the video. But this needs to be straightened back up that way. Uh, in order to work correctly so I'll go along this edge and make sure that's all where it needs to be so those are some of the things we're working on right now we will be back in another five seconds and see what we've accomplished yeah okay this new phone I can't tell whether it's making a video or not so we got quite a few things done here uh, got the several things done and pulled the welder out as you can see, I've got several plug welds uh, along the back here, and that has really helped to stabilize that back piece right now. So we've got that done. I uh, straightened these, both of these sections were crooked um, along in here. So I straightened out both sides of that. Got them where I want them. Got my uh, rusty spot repaired there and all ground off and cleaned up and ready to go. So that should be good. That was really the only rusty spot on this whole floor. So I'm pretty excited about that. I'm going to go ahead and clean up some of this stuff with a putty knife. I don't think I'm going to try to get all of it off, but I'm going to get the loose stuff cleaned up. And let's see, what else have we done here? Those are kind of the big things, I think. I had a couple of spots where bullets had hit the floor there, so I pounded them back flat. Um, yeah, I think that's kind of all, everything I've got done on this. It's just fairly time consuming. So, oh yeah, I uh, got this vent pounded back out that was right there. And uh, so that's much better. I may tweak on that just a little bit more. I can still feel just a little bit there. 
I don't have to get it perfect because I don't really care, but as nice as this floor is, I want to get it pretty decent shape. So I'm going to do those few things. Then we're going to flip it back over and I'm going to do my welding on that. And then I've got had a couple of cracks up on the floor up there. We're going to touch those up so that uh, it stiffens it back up a little bit. And then I think we'll be ready to move on to working on this cab. So we'll get it flipped over and uh, I will get that work done and then show you what I've actually got accomplished. So there you go. We'll be back in a few minutes. All right, here we go. Uh, we have uh, gotten all our welding finished up there and kind of ground up uh, the places where you know where we did weld it up and then also where we're going to have welding joints that's why i cleaned that up right there it was all going to be hidden and so i may get me some primer that i can weld through and put on that uh, i got our hole patched up here i'm going to prep this up for getting it ready to weld to the cross brace back window again got these fixes done over here yeah, so a lot of this stuff after you once you get it ready, you don't even know it was there. So that's a good thing. But I think I've got that where I want it now. Um, I may do some more cleaning up on it. I'm not sure, but I've got all the prep work done on it for body work and metal work and those kind of things. So it is ready to be fitted over there in the other cab. So probably what I'm going to do is uh, get it down off my sawhorses and out of the garage so I have room to work on the other cab, I think. That's probably the game plan because it's going to take a lot more room to be able to get it worked on correctly. So that's where we'll go from here. This will disappear. We'll get that more centered in the garage and then we'll be back. Yeah, time passes quickly. Yeah, for you guys, for me, it's a lot of work here. So I'll show you a couple things I've gotten done. So before you go doing some an operation this big, maybe I talked about this a while ago, but uh, you need to do the basic body work um, because it's like right there, we had that huge dent going down that side, and that dent um, actually could have pulled the back of the door around, it, or the door opening. It could have done a lot of things. But before we go cutting this loose of the floor, or trying to patch in a patch panel here or that panel along the back, I need to have that pretty much where it's going to end up being permanently in the correct place. Because if I don't, and then I weld some other pieces in, I may create more problem where I, I actually can't get it back to where it needs to go. So we've done quite a bit of body work here. Um, got that dent that was caved in really big back out now. It's really could be at the bondo stage if I wanted to. I've got, it's pretty dang flat along there where it's supposed to be. We've also fixed this one that was caved in here and that one that was smacked in there. Uh, we've still got a few places out on the roof that I need to work out, but because I'm not really dealing up here, I'm not going to worry about that. Um, I've pulled the door sill plates up right there because I'm going to be cutting and welding in that area and I want them out of the way. Um, and I need them in good shape because they're the ones I'm going to reuse. I've pulled the emergency brake setup out of the truck. Just did that tonight uh, because I'm not going to use that style of emergency brake. And uh, that involves both sides of the floor. So quite a bit of stuff up in this area. Had to get that out. Um, the one big dent that I still have to work on is this right here where it's caved back in that way. And in order to do that now, I've been able to see that I'm going to be able to take this channel out right here that I've been, I'm going to replace it anyway because it's in bad shape. But once I get that channel out, then I can get up in there behind and start working this dent out to where I need to be. And once I've got that done, then I will be ready to start cutting the floor out of this thing. Uh, so that's kind of, I guess, most of the main things I've gotten done. 
I can't remember if I told you this was had had something fall on it here and uh, it actually knocked this down and the top of the dash but I was able to get in behind there put a block and a hydraulic jack on the floor right down there and lift up and do 90% of that just with the jack and a board under there and then just kind of carefully finish it off with the hammer so that's in pretty good shape I think those are kind of the main things I've been working on here I'm I just I'm really especially happy with the way this corner has turned out it was so bashed in that I didn't know um, <laughs> how well I'd be able to even get it out but uh, it's like I said it's in pretty decent shape right now I could get some bondo on that and be perfectly happy with it uh, same thing with these up here so that's kind of where I'm at I this uh, rain gutter channel here was really screwed up so I've gotten it back to where it's uh, much much better it's still got a long ways to go I haven't messed with this section of it yet because it's really not something I'm worried about quite at the moment but uh yeah i think those were the things that i've accomplished so far these are just uh little preparatory things that we have to do in order to get the thing ready to swap that floor out so there we go i'm going to sign off until i get back with the next bit of progress here big thing i focused on tonight was right here on this corner um this had been caved in a lot and uh, so I had to get that pulled back out. So I've got uh, the same uh, curvature coming along here as I do over on the other side. So I've got that done. Uh, body work again here. We got most of the dent out. There's still some stuff that could happen there, but we're in generally the right shape there. I've uh, I got to that by removing this piece right here, which remember I said was very rusty. And so I needed it out anyway so I could do these repairs. So I got it out. That allowed me to get in here and work that dent out. So I got that done. Um, over on this other side, I had the heater was still in there. There it is. We got it out and uh, pulled the hood hinges off on this side to get to that last heater bolt. I had to, again, take that same piece out here. And that allowed me to reach that last, the back side of that last bolt, which was right here. And it was super rusty, so I just grabbed uh, the nut that was there and bent it off. But that allowed me then to take that piece of rotted metal out there and get that taken care of. Then one of the other big challenges that I had was over here. Because of that dent right there, when that happened that dent pulled that door post, door pillar around that way. So I had to bring it back over here to get my spacing on my door right. So I've got that to where it matches the other side now. Um, I'm happy with that. I uh, got myself in preparation for cutting this off. I've got a measurement there, which is the, the distance between this corner right here and that corner right there so that when I weld them back on I can get that set back in there at the same distance then got myself another measurement there that is so that I get this point right here lined up in the same spot so that's my measurement from this point right here to a line straight between where those back pillars fasten got that done um, also since I'm going to be patching in a panel here. I needed a reference point to where this line in the where the fender mounts would line up because my, my weld and cut's going to be up through here somewhere. So I got myself a measurement across there at the top of the hinge. I got that written on there in black and sharpie so you can't see it. But I wanted that measurement. These other two I'm going to put some cross bracing in the doors here to tie the front and the back together. Um, hopefully that will make it so that I really don't even need to worry about that measurement, but I have it just in case. Um, I took the back patch out of the cab. Um, 
maybe I should have, maybe I shouldn't, but it wasn't held in there very well. I had one good weld on that side and two on this side. So I'm like, yeah, I'm just going to get it out of the way. So I've got that out of there. Um, let's see. I think those are the main things that I've done tonight on it. But I'm actually, I'm getting quite close. Once I get the braces welded in into the doors uh, to stabilize that, then I'm going to be ready to start cutting and getting that old one out of there. So that's where we're at right now. As you can see, yeah, this is a long drawn out process. Uh, for what I'm doing, if you were just replacing the floor in a relatively good straight cab, uh, you could cut out a whole lot of what I've been doing here. But this prep work can get in the body, uh, the, the big dents out, and everything back can correct dimensionally is important before you start the process of getting that floor out of there. So we're really, we're ready to go now. I, again, I'll put the cross braces in and we'll start cutting on that uh, the next time that I work on it. So we'll follow up with you in a couple of seconds. Just start cutting. As you can see I've got the doors braced. Um, that will keep uh, everything from moving in relationship to each other that way. I chose not to brace across the back of the cab. So I'm not too worried about that. I'm not sure these floors are going to be uniform in size enough. It won't matter. And really, if I can keep the door shape correct, that's really what I'm after. Um, the side-to-side -side part of it really isn't going to change a lot. It could have a teeny-weeny effect back there in that back panel, but it's not even going to show up because of the way we're doing it. So that's why I don't have it braced across. But I think we're going to be good to go. So I'm going to start cutting here. First thing I'm going to do, uh, come back here and I'm going to cut straight down through the floor. Both places there, just like I did uh, removing the other one. But that will cut me free from the floor at that point. And then I'm going to get around here and I'm going to start making the cuts in the corners right there. I got to grind that weld out or cut through that weld in both of those corners. And at that point, then I'll probably be able to roll the cab up on its back to do a lot of the rest of the cutting. I guess I got to cut that vertical brace loose from the floor over there on both sides. So that's, those, those are kind of the first things that I'm going to do. And then I'll roll the cab up on its back. And that's probably where I'll see you at the next point in the video. All right, so we got that part done. Um, got ourselves cut through this weld here and that one up there on both sides. Um, can't really see it here, but we've made a vertical cut down through there on the back of the cab, at least through the sheet metal. And then there were some on these things. There. There's a weld right here, right, that welds the top of the, the door jam to the floor. So we got that cut, then you have the same situation up here, and along that seam right there, there were two or three welds, and I had to cut them loose on both sides. So we've got all of that done on both sides. Got the thing rolled onto its back, and uh, first thing I did... When I got it rolled onto this back is this uh, seam across here that we're going to take apart had had quite a bit of damage in it and it was you know rolled over and things so I've got it flattened back out clear over to here where I'm going to be repairing it anyway and looking at this now what do I got to do to get loose got a little piece of metal right here I've got to cut if I had a good cab corner here <clears throat> I wouldn't want to cut that I'd want to drill out the spot welds that are fastening it together here. And on this side, I'm not going to need to because I'm going to replace this bottom corner of the cab here. But once that's cut loose, really, we are pretty free along in here. I might have to do something to get the lower part of this free from the floor, but I don't think so. I think that will actually, when I cut this and do a little prying in there, um, that should get, because I'm really trying to get the, the door post free from 
the floor. And so all of this qualifies as floor right here. And uh, so I think that'll free me up where I should be pretty well loose there. And I'm going to have to come over here. I'm going to drill out all the spot welds along this seam here. And then I'm going to come down here and because I got a better bottom over here, I'm going to drill out these welds here. I'm just going to roll this back because this is a semi solid metal in there, as good as my other patch. So I'm going to try to save it without damaging it too much. And what if I roll it back here and flatten it back out, it's not going to be visible anyway. So that's what I got to do there. That should have me free along that uh, seam down there. And that should have me rocking and rolling. So I'm going to go to that point. Um, I will use my, you know, center punch these spot welds and use my spot weld drill to drill them out. Um, I don't really care if I go all the way through on these uh, because this part's going to get thrown away. But I want holes to do some more plug welding to put it back together on that flange there. So I will drill through it. So that's where I'm going to go. We will come back here. I know I could show you guys all the tedious stuff that I'm going to do, but I think these explanations are going to be just as good. Um, I've, I've shown you how to do some of this before. So anyway, there we go. I will be back in a minute as I get those parts uh, taken care of. All right, I figured I'd throw in here another, um, what do you call it? I'll show you how I cut spot welds. Boy, my brain isn't thinking all at the same time here. Started doing a couple of these and I realized, you know what? I might as well show you the tool that I use and how this works. So what I use is this tool called a rotor brooch. And it uh, fits in your drill like that. It has interchangeable cutting heads that are basically like little hole saws. There we go. Maybe you can see that better there. It has a centering pin in the middle of it. So what you do is you go into each of your spot welds and you try to get a center punched uh, starter hole right in the middle. Just enough to keep that pin from wavering out of there as you're drilling on it. And then it doesn't take a lot of speed. I'm trying to do this with two hand or one hand here, but I'll show you. So I get this thing started. And we're really just using a hole saw. It's got a little tiny hole in there. You're going to go in there, and on these old cars like this, you'll notice when I get through the first layer of metal there, I kick out some rust. Battered rust flew out of there, and that means that I cut through the first layer of metal and hit the rusty surface of the second layer, and that's where you need to stop because that means you got your weld cut. So when you do that... Um, let me get another tool here and we'll just see if I'm actually succeeding at what I'm doing. It's kind of difficult to do one-handed, but i uh, got myself an old wood chisel that I use. And uh, I'm going to set the camera down for just a second and pound on this. So hang on just a minute. There you go. You can look at my lovely front of my shop. How's that? All right. Yeah, now you can look at my ceiling. There you go. Was that exciting? All right. Sorry for the very poor cinematography here, but uh, by getting down behind that, I'm able to pop those two pieces loose. And as I'm doing it, I can see that there is still... So I'm not completely loose right on this edge of the cut right there. So that means I'm either going to, I can probably just take the chisel and pound that through and cut it. And that should free that up. But anyway, you're going to work down to it in that process. I got one more to go there. And uh, then that should have me free on this corner. So I just wanted to show you that tool. Um, I got mine at the local welding supply store. And... Uh, I assume you can do that uh, wherever you're at, but that it's called a Rota, so R-O-T-A-B-R-O-A-C-H is what that tool is called. 
But that's a little tiny demonstration on cutting spot welds because when you're doing stuff like this, you are going to do a lot of that. And uh, there's other ways to do it. And this is the way that I happen to like. Okay, we've accomplished what we set out to do here. So here's my spot weld that I drilled out, pulled that loose. I've got this bent back out of the way there so it'll clear the floor. The floor can come down out of there. Um, I look down in here, you can see I've got the door post loose from the floor. That was my big goal there. Um, got the floor loose from the firewall. You can see along there, along here, and then back over there on the other side. Again, got my floor loose from the door post. So that's got our entire front end uh, broken apart there. So I found more spot welds on this side than I did on this side. And even before I found those, I decided, you know what, I'm going to drill me a few more holes in here so that I get more welds biting that together. Plus on the inside of the floor there, I'm going to run a few beads along there, short ones just to, I want that to tie together really good and strong and it's easy to do. So that's where I'm at now. Now we're going to move down to the bottom end, which I haven't even looked at or cleaned yet, but I'm already cut through, where is it? Somewhere, looks like right in this neighborhood. I'm cut all the way through the skin except for this little lip right there I got to cut that and then I've got to find there'll be some spot welds along there that I've got to get loose all right yeah and I'm gonna try I think to leave this rusty um, cab corner on there and in the process of putting this back together um, looks like on that other side, it really didn't get a matter a whole lot. But uh, so I'm going to drill out the spot welds going along, around here uh, to get the floor loose from the the cab corner, and then I'll also drill the ones out down here and over here to where that cut is, which I think is right there. So those should free me up from the skin of the cab. And I'm going to have to, in order to get this floor out, I'm going to have to do it with it laying on its back so I can tip it out this way to get it out of those cab corners. And then when I put the new one in, I'll have to set it in the cab corners and set it up like this. But that should all be doable once I get this loose. So anyway, got to break those loose there. I found on these upper corners that I still hadn't got my welds all the way cut through up in here. So I had to do quite a bit more. Yeah, sorry, you can't see it. Quite a bit more cutting on those welds. I'm sure that's going to be the case on that weld right there. Uh, but, you know, all in all, this, this probably took me 30 minutes to get that apart. So I'm pretty happy with that as far as the time investment goes in this thing. So, yeah, okay, that's where I'm going to be. So I'll, I'll get these corners cut loose and uh, come back to you at that point. All right, then we are freed up at the corner. So I think our floor is ready to come out. And I got all those spot welds uh, opened up there. So now we've got that freed up. And do a lot of cutting in here. But uh, let's see, we got that's all free now. Um, I'm free down here at the back corner. Got all those spot welds cut out and everything. So there this side was much easier because uh it was all rusted out so i just used the grinder and cut off wheel and cut a bunch of it off had to drill one weld out there the rest of this was freed up so we're in good shape there uh, had to cut this um, unlike the other cab so there's a flange that goes along here on the door post and that flange on this cab was spot welded down in there so it was quite a bit harder there but managed to get those separated and got my saws all down in with a big metal blade and cut that loose so now we're 
put a little freed up here. So we are, I believe, literally ready to come out. Um, yeah, I'm going to back off the camera here and see how that looks. I suspect. All right, we'll take a stab at it here. Oh, oh there it comes. Ta -da -da. So I'm going to. I'm going to shut the camera off because I want to use both hands to pick it up out of that corner rather than bending the corner over. But I'll get this out and then we will be ready to start doing the prep work on the cab to get it back in shape. Well, there we go. She's out. This is what your $100 cab project looks like here. <laughs> I'm not going to show this to my wife. She'll probably freak out. Why did you do that for her? So, always amazing. You get this stuff all cut apart. <laughs> what kind of junk you find in here. This is a nice bondo reinforcement, don't you think? Had one of those in each side. Uh, there's an old beer can pull tab. Bolts. Thistles. A little bit of all kinds of garbage in here. Yeah, so anyway... The real point here is what am I going to do next? So I'm going to spend some time here prepping this metal for the welding process, things like that. So I guess you can see that fairly good. I've actually got a second layer of metal right here. So I'm going to get that ground off of there, this up here. I'm going to get this flange ground clean so that I can weld to it around that corner and everything. I'll come here and do the same thing. I'm going to get myself some uh, spot weld holes drilled, clear through this metal so that I can weld from the back side once I get set down there. I'm going to do that all around that. Um, obviously, I've still, I'm not even going to deal with that cab corner until I get the floor completely welded into it. And then I'll start working on the patching process. This one over here. Um, I'm actually, I don't think I'm going to weld this back together because I don't know how much of this I'm going to ultimately end up keeping. But again, I've got a double layer of metal right here. And so I'm going to get that ground off, get this flange clean so I can have some good welds there. Um, I'll get this drilled out. Some of it is, but I want to get me, you know, another hole there at least, maybe two and Enough here that I can make a nice, good, solid connection there. I need to take these and grind the bottoms off of them smooth and clean so that they'll weld good. Over here, this one I've got to straighten a little bit because it's uh, been bashed in just a little. So I do those things right there to get me ready on the back. This is kind of the same process. I'm going to grind this clean so I can get a good weld along there. Get this piece of metal off right there. Use the old high-tech method here to get it off and out of the way, like that. And get my grinder in there and clean that up. Um, yeah, so I'm going to do the same thing here. I'm going to get myself some clean metal so I can deal with this. I'm not going to mess with this yet because of the, the process of patching that. I think, yeah, I'm going to get some of this piece trimmed up a little bit here so that I'm not having to try to grind right next to my floor to get that figured out. Um, this is another thing that I'm going to need to fix. So this corner, probably from back here, is too rusty right in this area. So I'm probably going to put myself a patch panel in along here. And, and maybe, I don't know what I'm going to do about that. It would be nice if I could leave that in there. And I might figure out how to. But anyway, I want to get probably a patch panel that goes up across here. This this is bent quite a bit here. Uh, you know, I might even, I can't remember what I took out of that other one. But I might be able to come something like that and get myself... A patch panel put in there so that it's ready to fasten the things and that's gonna yeah I was gonna say entail taking this apart but hey there's nothing to take apart it's all gonna go 
So I want to get a lot. I, I want to get the the sorry the rust repair done where I'm going to be attaching to the new floor and anything that's close to it like this. And so you know again here I've got to have a patch panel over in this area. So I might. I'll probably just cut this out because I don't want to weld something in there and get this in the wrong position before I fasten that floor onto it. So I just get that cleaned up and ready to be patched. Um, I got to go along this edge and re-straighten it again. Maybe get myself a few more spot weld holes drilled in it. Kind of the same way all the way along here. I'd like to have a hole there and can't remember where I ended up. Probably right here's the end of it. But anyway, I want to get those things ready to go. Then I'm going to set my floor back in there. And before I really start doing much welding, I'm going to get the thing sitting back on the ground, sitting upright. But I will probably tack it into here on both sides, I think, just to keep it in place. Might do that and put a spot weld or two along in here on this flange to get it in place so that it doesn't fall out when I go to sit it down. And then we'll do the bulk of our welding on the ground, I think. Or I'll get it tacked together and then get it up where I can actually reach it. So that's my game plan here. I hope I'm not being too tedious to this. I want you guys to be able to see the steps of going about doing this process. And that's why I'm... I'm trying to do all these explanations here. So I'm going to get those things done, get the floor and the mess cleaned up, and then I'll show you the prep work that I've got just before we're ready to put the floor in. Oh, yeah, one more thing. Um, I don't have to do this yet, but I want, to, I want to take these braces out because they are not on the other floor, and they might be something that I might want in there at some point and so they're in good shape so why not cut them off and spot weld them back in place not going to be too big a deal but that's one of the last things that i want to grab off of this one i think and then i may use it uh, as cut it up for patch panels or whatever see here's a here's a fun thing so i, I talked about how i might need to get this i might need to cut this off to actually get rid of the rust here well, I've got over here, I've got several ribs in this floor that I could cut them out and patch them into that in order to keep that, uh, the look of the old floor. And so on a rat rod, it doesn't matter, but I want to do this so I can show you how to create something besides a rat rod if you want to. Um, that's just what I'm after. But as I've been putting this cab together, my real goal here is to make it pretty nice. I, it, it probably will look ratty as far as paint and finish goes, but I don't want it to be a rust bucket and falling apart. I've got the stuff to fix it, so let's fix it. And the more of it that I can fix, maybe I can teach a few things as we go about the process. So there you go. I'm going to wrap it up here and start uh, cleaning up those flanges and stuff to be ready. All right, got everything ready to start the process of putting the floor in now. So I've got it drug in here. Um, I went out and cut the, I can't see that, cut the cab corners off of the old cab uh, because the first thing that I'm going to need is this inner panel there um, because this floor is built slightly different and it did not have the inner panel to the curve attached to it. So I've got those, i got to separate them from the cab corner itself. And uh, the other next thing I'm doing here is... Boy, I can really see my mark. So that line right there, I cut this thing purposely long because I didn't know exact measurements. So I've gone down here. I've got myself a center mark on the floor, and I've measured side to side on this to these cuts here to see where I've got to make those cuts. So I got myself some marks. Got myself a center mark here and measured over till I got the place that I'm ready to cut those. So I'm going to get those done. Get those cab corners separated, and then I will be ready to weld them onto this floor. And when I get that done, I think this floor is ready to be put in. Um, 
The other thing that I'm going to do here is we're going to be fighting these things, uh, these back braces. And uh, that one right there is kind of mangled. Not horrible, but um, as I got to looking at uh, that brace right there in the center of the thing, I think I can take that one out and flip it upside down and use it to repair this one. So for the time being, I think what I'm going to do is I'm just going to get these things up out of my way like that. So that kind of bent some stuff there, but it didn't do any damage. Uh, it'll bend right back into place. So I think I'll get those up out of my way like that. And then as I was looking at these cab corners, so that one's completely bad. And this one is very rusted out, but this one is better than my patch that I have for that side, which is they're switched around now, but it's vice versa on the other truck. So, or yeah, on the other side. So I'm going to have one semi good one out of the bunch to get in there for the shape. And then I'm going to show you how to, to take care of patching the rust in them since I don't have good rust free ones, but I do need, it's like on that one, I need to use the other one that I've got so that I can keep my main shape. And, and that one is rusted out way higher up than this one. And so I'm going to, I'm going to replace it with the one that I've got, and then we'll go in and cut out and patch the rust pieces in it. So those, those are the things I'm going to work on now. I'm going to get this floor trimmed up and start there. And then I will be back and show you as we're ready to go in. All right, we are ready to put it in. So I just uh, did all the things I just talked about. Mostly got these corners ready and got them in so that uh, I've got that filler back there behind the uh, lower cab corner. That's the main thing I was doing on that step. Got some of the other prep work stuff done. I need to do a little more grinding right there to get the rust off. And now we're sitting in here. So a couple things. If you have a back on your cab, then it's going to change the way that I do it. And most of you will. This is an odd duck situation here. But if I had that back on the cab, I couldn't put that upright brace in place with the floor. I'd have to drill it loose from the floor or cut it and re-weld it or something in order to make it work. But because the back's missing, that gives me a lot of leeway. Um, like I said, I've got my edges of my back cut off there so I should fit between these two points there and on the other side um, also if your cab corners are in as good or better shape as mine on both sides um, it's going to require you to do some lifting probably to get this thing in there but because this one's so bad what I'm going to do is take that other end and try to stick it back in there first because that one still has the bottom lip on it so i'll try to get that into place and then that should let me swing this one over and get it in there and uh, at least that's where we're gonna go from here and see if it works kind of really don't know how it's gonna play out but we're gonna find out so i am gonna i think i'm gonna do that off camera because i don't think you need to see me wrestling around with it to get the idea uh, but I'll see if I can get it in place there and we'll be back in a second okay there we go we got the floor sitting back in it so I also got some vice grips clamping it there at the front because it didn't want to stay in by itself <clears throat> um, and then I couldn't get it aligned while I had it sitting upright on its back just because the back was tweaked out of shape and so that's the reason I've got it sitting down in order to get to that point, uh, those back braces, remember I had them kicked out like this? Well, they had to be pushed back in because they had to go down between that seat uh, rail there and the back. And then I'm also going to have some uh, complications with them interfering with this because those are two different mounting and bracing systems between the two trucks. But I think it's going to actually allow me to do something that I that will make the whole thing work out better so anyway that's I got to that point now I'm gonna 
uh, take my measurements that I pulled off of the back corner down there for that there's eight and five sixteenths that I've got written down there. That tells me where this surface has to be off of that back corner um, on both sides. And so I'll get those marked out so I can, I'm going to have to pull the cor cab corners forward just a little bit to get to that. Um, also, this uh, little piece here that was tied into the door pillar, I'm going to have to rethink that because this uses a different kind of door seal and I like this door seal. So I'm probably going to want, I want to keep that usable. So that's kind of where I got to go from here uh, to get myself started on putting it back together. So we'll go get those lines laid out. I'll probably get this cut off. I have to look at it a little closer. I may just cut it off back in here and get it clear out of there. Um, in fact, that's probably what I will do. That'll allow me to be able to use the seal, which I think is more important. So there we go. I'll be back when I've uh, got the thing kind of sitting where I want the back corners to be anyway. Okay, so we have pulled the cab up into here into alignment and got her welded in place. I'll show you what we did here. So let's see. Back in there on this piece, we ended up cutting the flange off of it um, because that it was going to hit here. But uh, by getting that on, I don't have to cut clear back here, and then I can eventually go in and attach it to the door jam. So once I got that done, then we pulled our measurements that we'd made before off of the back wall, and we got this, uh, it's 8 and 5 sixteenths of an inch to there from this point right here. So we measured forward and ended up being one inch in front of this piece here. So we got that in place, and we uh, pulled our door jam up to where it matched that, lifted it up to where there's a point right here. Uh, where this curvature comes down and changes direction going down there. Uh, that needed to be level with the top of the floor. So we got that done, got that set in place, and buzzed ourselves a bead down there. Tacked it in place and buzzed the bead once we were happy with it. So we've got that done on both sides. So that's got our back cab corners tied together. Our next project is to move up here and repeat that process here on the front cab corners. And so again, we've got... This curvature with a point right there that's actually sitting about here right now. So we're going to have to lift that up because it's got to be level with the floor of the cab. So we'll get ourselves, get the paint ground off and lift that up, hold it in place and uh, tack and weld that up. And then that will have our floor solid into our uh, cab and we can move on to the next step. So I'm going to do that next and then we'll be back to show you our progress. Okay, here we go. Got that all done there. Got the point of it lined up where we want it. Everything in place. Had to put some, let's see, some clamps on it to pull it together this way. But uh, I really like the way that worked out. Really nice and clean. Um, I didn't weld across the top here because actually this side panel tucks down in between there and I'm going to have to do some rust repair uh, on that before I do that weld. So I'm actually going to do that in the next video. But now we're going to get up there. I'll lay the cab up on its back, I think. Actually, maybe I can do it from there. And we're going to spot weld that uh, seam right there so that we get our floor tied together in those two places. And over on that other side, out of the end, I've got a lot of rot that I'm going to fix. And But over on this end, we're in pretty good shape. So I'm going to tie this end together on the first three or four spot welds there, and then we'll let the rest of it go once I get to where I've got rotten metal. But I'm going to do that, and that'll be our next step. So I Probably, I was going to roll it up on its back, but I think I'll be able to do those spot welds from down over here.
the way that I've got it. Yeah, if you can see the way I've got it drilled there, they're drilled in this side, so I really don't need to tip it back up. So we'll get ourselves some clamps in place and some stuff cleaned up, and uh, we'll get that welded up and show you what we've got there. There we go. Got that all plug welded, I guess is the technical term for it, but uh, all across this side over here to the transmission tunnel, which in it's right there. So this side of the floor is all welded up. Um, had a spot here out the edge where I want a little more bite, so I just welded the two edges together. And over here on the other side of the transmission tunnel, welded it up to where I thought I had good metal, and uh, after that point, I'm going to be doing some rust repair. So, we've got that part done, and I think I'm going to just uh, walk you through the rest of this. So, as you can see, my uh, front cab corners are really bad. I've got a lot of rust repair to do there, but once you've got this thing in place, you're really, um, you're going to, I think there's, yeah, there's spot welds down along the bottom here that you're going to do. And I believe, I can't remember, I think we said there's spot welds here or something. I actually don't remember what it was. Seems like, anyway, some way this is going to get fastened to this uh, assembly out here in the front cab corner. So you'll have to do that. Then around on the back... Again, similar kind of a thing because, you know what, let's go around and let the jack down. So that we can see a little better back there. This will let you see a little bit more how this all came together. So this area right here, I would have spot welds that I could uh, probably can go ahead and do those, but I'm not going to tackle those until I start repairing the rust in that cab corner. Uh, you would have your spot welds all along the bottom of your back here to do, and then just a series of spot welds going around the corner, and your floor is going to be in there. So, that I think is where I'm going to end this video because I want to do that rust repair on a separate one. This one's going to drag out and get too long. But anyway, there you go. Now, it's like I've been saying all along, I've got myself a nice, solid, straight floor in here where I don't have to go in and do a bunch of repairs on the floor other than, you know, right over there. I've got a little bit to do. Uh, but generally speaking, this is a fantastic floor for an old truck like this. Uh, I was short of getting a brand new one. So anyway, that's where we're going to wrap this one up. And then we'll, uh, like I said, the next ones, we'll dive into the rust repairs. We'll uh, get the rear cab corners repaired. We'll put the new back of the cab in there. New actually is a bad word. It's actually very old. But we'll get it um, put in there so we've got a nice solid back in a cab. And we'll be in business. I'll actually be clear back to where I started with this cab. <laughs> That's the funny part. Uh, but I'll have a much better, much more solid truck to work with. So, there we go. Uh, wrapping up this episode of Crazy Dad's Garage here. I hope you're learning something, that you've enjoyed this, that it's been useful. I know a lot of times, even if you're replacing your cab floor with a new one, the procedure is going to be quite similar to what I did here. But I just wanted you to see that it's doable. Um, it's not a gigantic uh, problem. If you've got you know, either a new one or you've got a good used one like this. So there we go. I'm going to wrap up this Eldon sign off from Crazy Dad's Garage. Hope you guys have fun and uh, we'll see you in the next video.